Hello, and welcome to another episode of Short Stories with Stefan, a reading rainbow runway roller coaster dedicated to bringing you fictional fun and the fantastic form of free internet content. Don't forget to hit the big trinity of an online entity. Like, subscribe, and share. And check out the podcast, too, anywhere you listen for these stories and more. And now, today's tale of scientific woe. A room full of strangers who met that day, all brought together by a benign school trip to a local lab to learn about biology and other sciences. Death is near, and tension dances on the invisible lines connecting each person in and out of the contained room. If you lift your left hand from that spot, we are all going to die. Jeremy's left leg is trembling, no doubt a redirection of anxious energy from his hand. The four children press into each other in the corner of the lab with their chaperone. There's something about the corner where two walls meet which feels safe, sturdy, and hidden from danger. Dr. Fierre keeps his calm demeanor while looking Jeremy dead in the eyes. Listen to me carefully, Jeremy. Are you listening? He nods. Good. I'm going to tell you something terrifying, and I need you to keep looking at me. Keep listening to me, and keep your hand exactly where it is. Jeremy chokes back some tears and nods. You are going to die. Jeremy lets out an exacerbated, whimpering exhale. He saw the writing in the sand too, but saying it out loud makes it real. I don't want to die. You will be a hero. I don't want to be a hero. The holding back of tears fails. They begin making their entrance from the corners of his eyes. Look at the children, Jeremy. Look! Jeremy does not move his neck or head. His eyes dart to the right of the room, where the children mush into a corner still. Beep! The sound alerts all in the lab to listen as the battle-worn voice of General Lestier speaks. Doctor, we cannot wait any longer. Dr. Fier looks through the double-pane, bulletproof glass window. Federal officers and SWAT team members stare back coldly. Blank slates, conditioned to look at the worst humanity has to offer without so much as a wince. Dr. Fier, the risk is too high. Please, the doctor shouts back. It is contained. Just get the children out of here. The general looks at the children who are vibrating with fear. He looks at Jeremy and speaks to the doctor. He cannot leave. Dr. Fierre looks at Jeremy, a man experiencing all the thoughts shooting through one's head when they actually see their death approaching. He won't. The people in hazmat suits open the door slowly and motion the children quickly follow them. Dr. Fierre is watching Jeremy studying his micro-movements and hoping he will rise to the occasion. In a flash quicker than one blink, Jeremy's body gives away his intention to remove his hand and escape with equal speed. Dr. Fier places both of his hands over Jeremy's as the door closes and the children escape. Jeremy begins to sob. The general gives the doctor a wholehearted salute. You've killed us, Jeremy says. I know, and it's the right thing to do. They lift their hands and brace for the end both dialing the one person who needs to hear their voice one last time.